Congressman Wahlberg, great to have you on our show. Well, it's good to be with you. Uh, always a, a, a good sign when NRA and I are talking. Yep, and great to have you, as I said. But uh, before we get to your commentary that you wrote about Fast and Furious, another Border Patrol agent has been killed in the line of duty, another agent wounded near the U.S.-Mexican border in Arizona. It happened early this morning, still early to know uh, if this was connected in any way to Operation Fast and Furious. But your reaction when you first heard about this? Well, it, it's a shock, especially since these agents were signed uh, uh, to a station near near where uh, we honored uh, Brian Terry with the renaming of that station in Echo, Arizona. Um, and uh, to have it happen so soon after that took place, that renaming, you begin to wonder if, mm -hmm. if uh, uh, these parallels have now collided uh, together. Um, it, definitely, it definitely says uh, we're dealing with a tremendous problem. It has to be treated... Uh, as that, as as a as a war in a sense Absolutely. on freedom and liberties, it it can't be treated at the pattern that we saw uh, with a long long term attempt at investigating Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, it's indicative of the fact that the Border Patrol agents, when they were saying to their leadership, "We've got a problem here, and what you're planning on doing is going to hurt us, and in fact, uh, may be fatal for some of us." Uh, let's stop what we're doing and do the right thing. I think, again, we're, uh, this is just an example that uh, we're not messing around. Absolutely, and a tragedy in so many ways, as you just pointed out. And as also, as you just said, the Inspector General's report is out. He recommended disciplinary action for 14 people. We haven't heard anything from the DOJ. We haven't heard anything from Attorney General Eric Holder. You surprised? I am not surprised because almost two years, uh, the Attorney General uh, uh, barricaded himself and his people against uh, getting to the getting to the bottom of the issue. I appreciate uh, the IG uh, Michael Horowitz for doing uh, I think a very credible job uh, in looking seriously at uh, not simply um, a, a, a project an idea gone wrong, but looking aggressively because this took the life of a border patrol agent serving the United States of America, even as uh, these border patrol agents we've just talked about. Uh, uh, dying and being injured, uh, we're, we're talking about real lives that are out there protecting us. And so our our government officials, and from the top of DOJ on down, ought to be involved with making sure uh, that information that is out there is known and in relevant ways uh, dealt with so that we don't have this continuing. And to to just, just simply stonewall for 18 months when uh, uh, Daryl Issa, the chairman of my committee, uh, Oversight and Governor Forum, uh, Senator Grassley, and others were asking for information so we could get to the bottom of it, find out what the problem was, and ultimately uh, find out who made the decisions that ultimately brought about the death and, 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 and beginning the, just the bad idea of walking guns over drug cartels with no way of tracing them, uh, to get to the bottom of that and, and make sure it never happens again. I'm glad that we now have some information, I think a credible report, that will be a basis for starting and continuing the investigation uh, from, from this point on. But, you know, as you said, to make sure it never happens again. But how can we do that? How can we change? How can we prove, improve if some of the key players involved with this gunwalking scandal, like Criminal Chief Lanny Brewer, are still there working inside the Justice Department? Absolutely. I think November 6th will help, if you don't mind me being a little bit political. Uh, no way. <laughs> uh, November 6th has to be a time, a date in history where uh, uh, people who love freedom in the United States and the liberties that we have, uh, plus believe that our government ought to abide by those same laws and be open uh, to uh, investigation where there's even the indication that something might have been done wrong, uh, a change has to be made. And I think when you have a, a, a Attorney General of the United States who's willing to uh, barricade himself against um, legal representatives of the government, and that be the people, uh, we are simply representatives of them, and we're asking for information that is due us as a result of our oversight. And we have the stone wall that goes on. It makes it difficult for the people of the United States to have the due process necessary to citizens, and ultimately the due process that gives us the certainty that, uh, that our security system, our law enforcement system, is not above the law, but in fact functioning with inside of the law. Yeah, and it's so true. And Univision just did a special report showing that 57 more guns linked to Fast and Furious were used in massacres, including a tragic shooting 
at a high school where 14 turn- teenagers were gunned down, and yet you got Attorney General Eric Holder insisting, you know, he was vindicated by this report. And he even admitted himself during testimony, we're going to be paying for this for years to come. The only, th- the only thing that he was vindicated in with that report was the fact um, that there was no evidence that he was aware or gave the order for uh, Fast and Furious. It does not say that between the lines, in the quiet of quietness, um, and in ways that could not be traced back to him, that he wasn't aware to some degree what went on. And that is our concern. Mm -hmm. But we do know from that report that there were people involved that directly reported to him. And I guess the question then should be asked of our Attorney General, why didn't he know? Yeah. Why and, didn't he know? And again, as you've indicated, why is Lanny Brewer still employed by the Department of Justice? Yep. And even the IG said he should have known. Should have known. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the fact of the matter, it's something like this. If, if the president used his executive privilege with an attempt to stop us getting at further information before the IG report came out, if the president used executive privilege, which is used generally, I say generally just to <laughs> cover my tracks against any misstatement, but it generally used only when the president is trying to protect himself or a, a member of his administration okay. from further review, then indeed, I guess we have to question why didn't the president know about this Fast and Furious, along with his, his uh, attorney general, and ultimately put a stop to it. And you wrote about in your commentary about the wiretaps. You know, you had Holder saying, hey, you know, he testified that he, he would be surprised if they included details about the tactics used. But guess what? The IG says they did. The tactics were used. Um, absolutely. And I think uh, the, at, at the very least, this, this is a, an example of what happens when stonewalling and attempts to cover up go on, as opposed to simply saying, this was a mistake. It was a tragic mistake that cost the life of a distinguished servant of the government, uh, specifically Brian Terry, a, a, uh, a son of Michigan, uh, who was born and raised in Michigan, served his country in the Marine Corps well, then went and served in law enforcement, ultimately at the border of the United States, protecting our citizens. And to have his life impacted by not simply a mistake, but a cover-up of a bad program that went on and uh, the stonewalling that took place from our Attorney General's office uh, is tragic because of the impact upon uh, Brian Terry's life, but also the impact upon the rest of the United States citizens that that produces greater uh, distrust in elected officials and appointed officials and uh, high offices of the land. You know, you're sitting on that committee. The IG comes to Capitol Hill to talk about a scandal, gets no coverage on the major networks. Um, And I'm sure the odds of President Obama being asked about this scandal during the debate tomorrow night is pretty slim. But don't you think the American people need to know more than they know about this? I agree. They need to know. And it's not just the NRA membership, not just those of us who take the Second Amendment as not an opinion, but as a true amendment to to the Constitution. Um, It ought to be on the minds and hearts of all people because uh, (laughs) the impact is for everyone. When I I questioned the Attorney General uh, during the hearings in front of our committee, and uh, I I didn't get any answers, and I finally said, well, if you're not going to answer me, I, I need to... Uh, make a statement that my concern is that uh, some of the conjecture that this was done to uh, to inhibit or attack the Second Amendment. Before I, I got the full statement out, he responded to me by saying, uh, Mr. Congressman, I'm the Attorney General of the United <laughs> States. How dare you question? And I said, wait a second. I understand you're the Attorney General, and with all due respect, I am the Congressman. I'm asking the questions. You're, under, uh, you're the witness under testimony. If you want to answer my questions, you're going to have to listen to my assertions. And that's what the American people are concerned about, that we are not getting answers. And Mm -hmm. this could have been dealt with long before. Uh, The Terry family could have had some relief and release to this, and the United States could have known for certain that with the problems that took place, we would undertake uh, methods to make sure that it never took place again. And 
the people that were responsible for it would have been brought to justice and handled appropriately. We're still in that process, yeah. but at least we have a report now that gives us some indication that we were right and on the right trail, and now we need to finish uh, uh, following the leads that we have and the tracks that we have and, and get to the ultimate solution and, and bag, uh, <laughs> in, in hunting terms, bag what is necessary to make sure that our country uh, sets in place an order for the future that this doesn't happen again. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the Terry family, they are not satisfied, and you can understand why they think that the people who fail to take the action to stop this operation, they need to go. And it's, it, it's, it's, you know, you can really appreciate what they have witnessed and been through all these years, and all they want is the truth, and they can't get it. I can appreciate it. I certainly cannot um, fully, fully understand no. it because I haven't gone through this. I can only imagine yeah. Uh, but that, uh, I think, um, is something that members of Congress, and uh, specifically those of us in oversight capacities, need to keep in mind that we can't let up on this until the answers are given and the people who are responsible uh, ultimately take the responsibility for it. And I think, as well, I will remind again that November 6th is the, is the key way to address this concern and others in making sure that uh, at the voting box, the people of the United States speak on behalf of the Terrys and others uh, who have not had their, their due process or their justice served well by the government that they respect.